How do you monitor your production application? Do you use any manual checks or do you run any scripts every now and then? Let's see how we can automate that using Dynatrace. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to use Dynatrace to monitor our application in production. Let's get started. Dynatrace is an application performance management software which is created for people like us who are using production applications in order to monitor those applications and get alerts from those applications. So we use Dynatrace at work. So if you personally ask me, I have used Dynatrace um, at work and it is pretty good. So what Dynatrace can do is like monitoring your application it can do network monitoring it can do um, synthetic monitoring it can do real-time user monitoring so it can even track your request right from the end to end so let's say when you hit a request to a server one okay from server one if the request goes to server two and then it goes on so it Dynatrace can even show that level of detail where it can show you the level of um, information across these services or the processes so if you have configured Dynatrace in your um, application in your um, firm you can get an end-to-end -end statistics of what is happening inside your JVM just right at your desktop okay so Dynatrace uh, uses a thick client basically it has a JNLP client so basically it is a swing UI which you will be using to monitor these application but I think Dynatrace is also changing their landscape um, they wanted to move to a web UI as well so if you notice here this is how a dashboard looks like in Dynatrace you can get lots of information from Dynatrace for example your real-time user monitoring you can see how many services are up how, how, how are the services performing are there any network lags are there any performance degrades you can see literally anything you want in the Dynatrace UI so how do we configure this Dynatrace UI? So in general, the Dynatrace comes up with a little bit costlier um, charge. So you will have to set up a daemon in your um, Linux machine. Let's say if you are uh, not using the cloud environment, you will have to have a, a Dynatrace daemon or a collector, they call it. So you will have to run a Dynatrace collector in your uh, VSI machine or your Linux machine. So you should have that running in your machine. And also there will be a central Dynatrace instance which will be collecting all these information using the collector. So in the backend Dynatrace collects each and every second's information and then stores it. And then you can use the Dynatrace UI to consolidate and then see it up in the UI. So that is how the dashboard is all getting built. So the collector collects and transforms the information to the central collector process in Dynatrace. And using the Dynatrace UI you can see all the information and then you can get a consolidated view of what's happening um, how is the queries performing how how is your process status at a higher level so that is how you can um, see it so if you see lots of companies are using it um, if you are using any cloud infrastructure you can use it uh, you can use Dynatrace by default so it can support azure it can support cloud foundry it can support um, all the existing cloud platforms which are out there so for example AWS as well so if you see here these are the different cloud platforms um, Dynatrace is supporting what is Dynatrace powerful at so if you see here these are the diff different um, stuff which they have listed by default the the synthetic availability monitoring which I mentioned earlier same way re real user monitoring the mobile app analytics business transactions connected device experience internet of things and stuff like that so also uh, Dynatrace claims that they are using artificial intelligence to come up with um, the statistics. I'm not sure how true is that. I haven't seen that level of uh, detail, but um, they claim that they are using artificial intelligence. But I have seen uh, both in cloud and in the VSIs or the normal Linux machines, the monitoring in Dynatrace is pretty good. So you can even configure that level of detail that if your performance is degraded in, in your JVM, you can ask Dynatrace to raise an alert or a send a mail to you so you can configure that level of detailing 
so let's say if your uh, jvm is going to hit out of memory you can configure it uh, saying that okay if the jvm heap size is reaching 80 percentage give me a message or an alert saying that okay your heap size is almost reached 80 percentage and if there is a restart or if there is a process shutdown you can get alerts so it all just works seamlessly so if there is a shutdown or if there is an unexpected failure on a particular uh, instance you can immediately get a mail triggered from the dynatrace instance as well so and, and it is pretty good in terms of uh, microservices monitoring that is when i i saw the real power of dynatrace when let's say we had uh, so for example in my case i had a um, system where we had like lots of uh, distributed architecture so you had like 30 40 processes running in parallel across machines right so using dynatrace we can see the end to end picture of how the request is traversing through the processes or the layers so it is pretty good in terms of um, building these layouts based on the transactions how they traverse so um, dynatrace is it just literally creates like an architecture diagram without even having to do that the only good only thing is you have to configure a collector in your uh, every uh, linux instance but in terms of cloud infrastructure you can have a common collector in the cloud data center um, or a pool so that you can get the dynatrace activated by default on any microservice which you deploy across the cloud okay so this is one of the tool which you can use for monitoring so in my previous video i would have showed the j visual vm so j visual vm was specific to jvm but uh, dynatrace is um it's at a different level so j visual vm gives the statistics at that particular instance you will have to run it um, in the machine or you will have to connect to a remote machine and then run it but dynatrace keeps track of data for a much uh, longer period so for example you can keep dynatrace information for more than three to four days because it collects information for every second so you can configure that in dynatrace i, I don't know how much is the maximum time limit but you can configure that time limit in dynatrace so it can it can like uh, track every second information and you can even see what happened at each second you can even see a method level break breakdown so i don't know if i i don't think i will be able to show it but you can do a free trial and then try it out but um, i haven't tried out in, in my laptop yet because i don't know uh, whether it will work for mac uh, or not so you can see like if you are um, having it in your firm you can check it out you can just do a poc and then check <clears throat> how useful dynatrace is in terms of monitoring your application right so that is what i wanted to cover as a part of this particular video hope you found something interesting so meet you again in the next video until then thank you very much